Does that happen to anybody? Happens to me all the time. And frankly, on most occasions, not even because the content isn't that great. It's just because we have information overload. Most people will say to me, I don't have a product, Barry. I don't know what to write about. Now, actually, that's the first challenge we must get over because frankly, and this is something I believe passionately. I actually say it slightly different to this. Dean made me rewrite it and say it this way. Everyone in this room is more knowledgeable about something than I am, which basically means that everybody in this room could be a guru or a teacher to me. Okay? So think about it right now. If you're struggling to think, what can I do or what can I do? Actually, I put it slightly different. I actually say, everybody in this room is undiscovered world class at something. And people think, well, no, no, world class means that I'm Tiger Woods or this, that, the other. Actually, to me, world class is that you're in the top 5%. I think we already established this morning that everybody in this room is already in the top 5%. And what you might, some of you might need to do is discover what 5% it is you're going after. So everybody in this room is more knowledgeable about something than I am. Another little point, in case you're still struggling with the concept that maybe you have some knowledge and maybe things don't work out for you. Even when you do something wrong, you have become an expert on how not to do something. Now, anybody, um, this is maybe, don't have to put your hand up for this one if you don't want to. Anybody in this room had a business failure? I've had a business failure. Actually, I actually had a fairly substantial business failure around about 1990. I mean, some people would call it financial collapse. Or people would call it bankruptcy. What do you bet I learned a lot about? I learned how not to run a business. I, ra I learned how not to make mistakes. So if anybody in here right now is thinking, do you know, I don't know what I'm going to write a blog about, or I don't know what I'm going to write a website about, think about a failure you've had and say, could you teach people from your failure? We're all experts at something. I'll ask you just to think about these things. What's your passions? What's your hobbies? What's your interests? And what's your career? In the UK, I couldn't believe this when I read it, because I actually saw this company advertising in the UK. Um, how, you know, it was a website which basically told you how to have a certain career. So let's say you wanted to be a fireman or a firefighter, how to be a firefighter, how to be a school teacher, how to be lots and lots of different things. This is a remarkably successful business. The interesting thing is that I think about 99.9% .9 of people who buy their product don't actually become firemen or school teachers or social workers or any of these things they bought them for. But of course, they managed to find a firefighter to teach and explain how to be a firefighter. How did you get into firefighting? Okay, so what is buzz marketing? Buzz marketing is the art of creating a large buzz and sense of excitement. It often leads to the viral effect and is the most effective way of standing out from the crowd and positioning yourself in a crowded marketplace. Have you ever felt buzz? Have you ever felt buzz? I promise you, when I landed here at Dubai Airport, the second I was just down, I felt buzz straight away. I, I think it was a nurse that was talking, this is Buzz City. This city is built on buzz. This city is built on excitement. Who in the world today hasn't heard about Dubai? If you go all over the world, everybody's heard about Dubai. That is viral marketing. Now, I don't know how, I don't know enough about the, the, the politics or the structures here, but I promise you what I do know is that somebody somewhere in Dubai must have had some sense of how to create viral marketing. Anyway, let's talk about getting online. Let's talk about having some sort of online success. Whenever I talk to people, they will say to me things like, but I don't know what to write about, Barry. Or they have a thing. Anybody ever heard the term writer's block? They spend hours writing content. And this is the really sad bit. They spend hours writing the content, and no one reads their content. So, you know, some of you people are going to go online for the first time. And Ernesto had made this very clear at the beginning of the day. You know, we want you to do the shortcut to success. We don't want you to take the long way around like some of us have taken to get to where we eventually got and had some sort of success. So we don't want you writing content that nobody reads.
They've got no system for idea generation. This is very important, something that's misunderstood today. I, I talk about this a lot. They don't know how to present it or format it. So you go to a web page, and if you just see lines and lines and lines and lines, even if it's a really long article, most of us will scan, if, you know, even if it has the most interesting subject line at the top, most of us will ignore it and go on. However, for the simple people like me, if it's broken into nice paragraphs, got some images in them, it has to have pictures for Barry. If it's got photographs in it and it's tabulated and formatted nicely, I'm going to read it. And finally, they don't know how to publicize their content. 